as Gus Angel, presented by the Plymouth Dealers of America, who proudly sell and service the beautiful new Plymouth for 1957. The time, about six months after Vicki and Gus Angel were married. The characters, well, you remember the Hatfields and the McCoys. The plot, Love Thy Neighbor? Oh, yes. You're already have a He's still at it, huh? Hasn't stopped for five minutes. No, honey, don't get inquisitive. None of our business if two families want to fight. I'm not inquisitive. I'm just nosy. <laughs> Listen to that Murphy when he gets mad. You can expect one problem family on the block, but why do we have to get stuck with two? Kathy Murphy's head in this way. Hi. Hi. Kathy, it shook you the light. Shut up, Finley. I'm talking. Finley. Hi, Vicky. Can I borrow Gus for a little while? Sure, come on in. What's wrong? Murphy's throwing things. But you're up here. Oh, Murph doesn't throw things at me. We got a pact with each other. <laughs> Who's he mad at? Oh, those creeps that live next door to us, the Finleys. Oh, come on, Gus, please. I can't handle him when he gets like this. Wouldn't it be better if you I You better went... go, sweetheart. Uh, don't let him hit Gus. Oh, he won't. He takes your coat. Hey, it's only two houses down. Oh, you man, do what she says. <laughs> Honey, I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, so you're Honey. the one Come on, come on. He's wrecking my kitchen. You can next later. <laughs> Don't you get mad. All right, all right. Get legal about it. Go ahead. Come away, too, Billy. How many times do I have to... Mrs. Angel. <laughs> Mrs. Finley. May I come in? Yes, come in. What is it, Mr. Finley? I came to ask a favor, Mrs. Angel. Why did you come in that way? To ask a favor. I know. But... Well, how can I help you, Mr. Finley? It's about Mr. Finley. I see. He's terribly upset. I've never seen my boy like this. Oh, your boy. The bald-headed one. <laughs> He was angry once before when he was 37. At that time, I put it down to immaturity. <laughs> Someone coughed on his backswing. Oh. Does your son play golf? My husband's playing tomorrow with his boss. What's that got to do with it? Well, I thought... What do you want me to do, Mr. Finley? Just come over and talk to him. Your son hardly knows who I am. He trusts you. Me? You're the only one on the whole block he does trust. That hardly gives me the right to interfere. The nicest thing he said about anybody since the Depression. <laughs> well, as soon as my husband gets back... He, he needs you now. All right, I'll go with you. Please, hurry. Would you write I'll be right back on that paper, Mr. Finley? <laughs> Things too? No, he's staring. <laughs> you just prop it up. Staring? At what? At the wall. That's the worst kind of staring, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the front door, Mr. Finley. Oh. He's just staring. What started all this in the first place? Just one of those things. Yeah, you can never tell. All right, Finley! That is definitely my last word. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Finley, this is the ultimate. 
Guess I will not. <laughs> oh, hi, lover. Okay, Gus. Storm's over. Hi, Gus. Hi, Murph. Yeah, let me do that. You must be poop. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> this one ran kind of long. <laughs> I guess I blew my top. <laughs> so I see. Well, I guess you won't be needing me anymore. Oh, stick around. We don't want him to think I slipped my trolley, do we, lover? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's none of my business. But stick around. Let me show you how it works. You see... Me and this Finley character next door had some words. So instead of belting them, I come home and do this. Make sense? Sure. Yeah, I see that way Merv lets off steam and nobody gets hurt. Well, Vicky's all alone up there and well, I... Maybe gotta... I shouldn't have run for Gus, but I couldn't turn you off. Usually he doesn't get past the cups and saucers. But, lover, you did it for me. Let me put on a pot of coffee, right? Well, I don't think the pot will stay on the stove. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? That was Finley and I kicked his teeth in. Does look a little like him at that. Oh, I think you broke his nose, too. He had a big interfering nose. Well, uh, I better be running along. I... Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you, Gus, but this one was really a Lulu. Hey, Gus. Yeah? Do you know what that egghead said to me? Who? Finley! He had the nerve to offer me his professional services, free. <laughs> he did? Well, I don't blame you for blowing your stack. Uh, what professional services? What does he do? Oh, he's a professor of psychology. Ah, 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 lover. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, why don't you go down to Vicky's and Gus's and have a cup of coffee? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, thanks for asking me. Serve the coffee in tin cups. <laughs> I'll be okay, Cassie, as long as I don't see Finley. Well, thanks again, Gus. Bye. Right. So long. Bye, lover. Bye, sweet. <laughs> oh, dear. He, he's fighting harder than ever. <laughs> he is? Who is he fighting with? Himself. <laughs> Well, I really don't see what good I can do, Mr. Finney. He, he likes you, Mrs. Angel. Try to make him talk. <laughs> Mr. Finley? Yes? Well, I'm at him. <laughs> Mr. Finley? It's the lady you trust, boy, Mrs. Angel, the one with the neat head. <laughs> Mr. Finley? Oh, that doesn't do any good. He can't see without his glasses. <laughs> you see, when he takes off the glasses, that's his way of shutting out the world. Oh, uh-huh. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't have been of more help. Goodbye, Mr. Finley. Don't go, Mrs. Angel. Are you all right now, Mr. Finley? Never felt better in my life. <laughs> Father, if you can't follow the conversation, stay out of it. I will not have disrespect for my children. Go to your room. <laughs> he was really very worried about you. I'm sorry, Father. It was very nice of you to concern yourself over our problem, Mrs. Angel, but I think I have it all worked out now. That Murphy person is a throwback. Well, I'm glad it's all settled. I'm glad you agree. If you ask me, they wouldn't let him in the ape house at the zoo. <laughs> Finley, I'm sure they would. No, only... <laughs> only a throwback like Murphy would cause such a commotion over a simple thing like father running across his lawn. He runs across his lawn? With the car. <laughs> Father has difficulty backing out of the driveway. That's because you don't put the wheels straight when you put the car in the garage. <laughs> You're supposed to turn the wheels, Father. Automobiles don't run on track. <laughs> At any rate, this Murphy and I had a complete discussion. The man's so illiterate that I offered him my professional services. What kind of services? What do you do, Mr. Finley? I'm retired. 
Asking me why. I'm a professor of psychology. Let's see. Well, I really better be running along now. I'll escort you home. Oh, no, no, that's not a bit necessary. Thank you. I just was down. Well, I don't see why you... My name is Vicky. Vicky, honey, I brought Mark back with me. Honey, she doesn't seem to be here. Oh, here's the note. What do you make of this? I'll be right back on that paper, Mr. Finley. <laughs> if it's got anything to do with the Finleys, it ain't supposed to make sense. You don't blame me for getting mad, do you, Angel? Oh, of course not, Merck. Well, I'm glad to see it my way. Every day, regular as clockwork, the old man is back across my lawn, and when I yell at him, he tells me to go to my room. <laughs> Uh-huh. I can take it from the old man, but I can't stand that bald-headed juvenile delinquent son of his. <laughs> oh, here she is. You didn't have to walk me home, but thank you. You never can tell, Mrs. Angel, when that Murphy creature might be lurking in the bushes. <laughs> what Murphy creature? The one with a low forehead and receding hairline. <laughs> Low forehead. Are you trying to insult my wife? <laughs> of course not. Good night. I'll be going, too. Uh, wait a couple of minutes, Murph. Now, let me out of here, Angel. I just figured out something. If he wasn't talking about Kathy, he was talking about me. <laughs> I don't know, but I feel much better. Now that Gus says that I'm in the right. See you later. <laughs> I didn't say one word about him being in the right. Whatever we do, sweetheart, let's keep out of it. Oh, you're right, honey. Let's stay away from those people. All I ask is that they stay away from me. They'd better. How is Mr. Henshaw coming by for you in the morning? Well, seeing the boss, he's got it all figured out. He's going to pick me up at 6.30 because he wants to see off at 7. Uh-huh. And then when you bring him back here for lunch, I'll have the Murphys and the Finleys here so all seven of us can sit down to eat together. Oh, honey, don't even kid like that. <laughs> oh, imagine Henshaw with that bunch. That is a sickening thought, isn't it? <laughs> you better hit the sack. It's getting kind of late. Mm, guess I'd better. I'll get a glass of milk first. All right. Morning, dear. What is it, Kathy? Well, I thought you'd like to see some of the work that Murph's been doing this morning. <laughs> oh, no. I hope you're proud of yourself, dear. Me? Nice to know which of your friends runs around calling your husband a throwback. Kathy, I did no such thing. Oh, come off it. Well, I didn't. Oh, I suppose you weren't at the Finleys last night. Well, yes, but yes, and Finley couldn't wait to get to the phone to call to tell us what you said. Oh, I met Kathy, you've got to believe me. I didn't call Murph a throwback. Well, then what did you say? Oh, Mr. Finley said Murph wouldn't be allowed in the ape house at the zoo, and I said he would. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. <laughs> he say that you said them to me. Whatever Mr. Finley said was wrong. You mean it? You cross your heart and hope to spit? I cross the... Oh, Kathy. Well, all right, then. Take your word against his any day. Oh, uh, I hope I didn't sound sore or anything. Oh, of course not. You don't forget this. Oh, yeah. Maybe Murph can kick it back into shape. <laughs> well, so long, Vic. Bye, Kathy. <laughs> Hello? Oh, Murph. You know, Kathy just left. While I had you on the phone, I want you to know that what Kathy said Mr. Finley said, I said, I didn't say at all. <laughs> Let me put that another way. I did not call you a throwback. Well, no, I wouldn't want to call him a liar. Good. As long as you understand. Fine. Goodbye, Murph. Thank <laughs> you.
Mr. Finley. Would you please come down to our house, Mrs. Angel? My son is having problems. Mr. Finley, I just can't get involved again. My husband's bringing his boss here for lunch, and I don't even have the house cleaned up. Please hurry. The way things are going, he'll be taking off his glasses any minute. <laughs> I just can't leave. All right. I'll have my boy come up here. No! No, I'll go with you, but I can't stay more than a minute. What is it this time? Now, Mrs. Murphy claims that you deny categorically having referred to Mr. Murphy as a throwback. Yes, I've already told you that four times. Mrs. Angel, I believe I can quote you verbatim. Oh, come off it. <laughs> when I referred to that Murphy person as a throwback, you said, quote, well, I'm glad that's settled. Oh, so you're the one who said it. I never denied having said it. I simply stated that Mrs. Angel agreed with me. I didn't mean it the way it sounds. Boy, you forgot to say unquote. <laughs> Father, if you can't follow the conversation, stay out of it. I have been following the conversation. That's how I know you didn't say unquote. Oh, let's turn off all the hot air. <laughs> didn't you just tell me that everything this boob said was wrong? I didn't say it that way, Mr. Finley. Now, whose side are you on, anyway? I'm not on anybody's side. I don't even know what it's all about. If you don't know what it's about, Mrs. Angel, then you shouldn't interfere. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I have to get the house cleaned up. Don't bother. We have a lady that comes in twice a week. <laughs> she means her house, Father. Put a muzzle on him. <laughs> and in turn, may I suggest a cage for that anthropoid next door? Look, Buster, I'm trying to be a lady. You're not trying hard enough. Father. And you didn't say unquote. Oh, Gus beat me in spite of himself. <laughs> I'm afraid lunch isn't going to be very fancy. I've had several interruptions. Well, you don't have to get fancy for me. I'd uh, like to wash up if you don't mind. Oh, surely help yourself. <laughs> I'm sure glad you thought of the elephant. I wasn't sure for a minute whether the handshaws were the elephants or the horses. <laughs> <laughs> you better get dressed, honey. I'll be right with you. I'll get things ready out here. Hi. We'd like to see Mrs. Angel. Uh, uh, can't you come back some other time? We have company. I don't see nobody. I must speak to Mrs. Angel. I understand that she's been libeling me. <laughs> but then my information came from a fairly unreliable source. <laughs> Your wife said he was a liar. <laughs> Vicky, will you please come here? I tried to tell him we have company. We have. I want to ask you all to do me a favor. Mrs. Thing. Angel, did you or did you not call me a liar? Of course not. Will you people please go home? Don't stare at me with those bug eyes. <laughs> she called you a liar. She didn't want to, but she did. Oh, she didn't want to. No, you see, she said, I wouldn't want to call him a liar. Well, that's what you said. Oh, please. My husband's boss is in the other room, and it'd be very embarrassing if he came out here and found us in the middle of a neighborhood squabble. I thoroughly understand. We'll wait till he leaves. Oh, can't you see Vicky's on the... Can't you see Vicky's on the hook? We'll just forget the whole thing, Vicky. Oh, thanks, Kathy. Well, uh, so long, folks. Uh, uh, come back later. Well, well. Am I intruding? Uh, they're just some neighbors of ours, sir. They were just leaving. Oh, you old friends, don't let me interfere with your friends. My name's Hensel. Mr. Finley, Mr. and Mrs. Murphy, Mr. Henshaw. We were just leaving. You were? 
I, I, I mean, don't leave on my account. No, don't do this sort of thing to me, Gus. I like to feel that I'm included among your friends. Well, that's just a lot of... <laughs> Come on in, sit down. Mr. Henshaw? Thank you. Well, what do you do for a living, Mr... Uh, uh Murphy. Murphy. I got an office job now, but I used to hack cab. That's a very expressive term, to hack. Yeah, we have a place in the insurance business that, uh, weren't there three of you? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> has Mr. Henshaw seen what you've done to the patio, darling? I don't believe he has. Uh, don't sit way over there. Come over here. Join the conversation. Thank you. There is a small matter which I'd appreciate your cooperation. I've just put in 20 new flight songs, Mr. Henshaw. Well, we've got a look at that. <laughs> now, this is just a hypothetical case, mind you. Oh? That patio was a real backbreaker, sir. <laughs> Gus even mixed the cement himself. <laughs> now, let us assume that there are two neighbors, A and B. A has a father who never hurt anybody in his life. B is a throwback. Let's skip all this A and B jazz, huh? <laughs> This friend of mine lives next door to a real goony family. And every day the old man backs the car across the lawn. Who would anyone... Yeah, good idea, honey. Now, what I want to know is, doesn't my friend have a right to be a little sore? Possibly. Well, I, I would think that would depend upon the extent of the damages. I can fill you in on that. The uh, nice neighbor surveyed the alleged damage, and at no time did the kindly old gentleman penetrate the lawn further than 11 inches. <laughs> Yeah, but how deep? <laughs> we settled a claim like this last year. No, no, that didn't apply. That was a woman driver. Oh, well. Psychologically, women are too emotionally unstable to drive at all. If I had my way, no woman would ever be issued a driver's license. Oh, come off of Henshaw. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, you men make me sick with all this jive about women can't do this and women can't do that. I thoroughly believe that women are eminently qualified to keep house and mind baby. Well, thanks a lot. All you men do is play golf and chase secretaries. I do really resent that, Mrs. Finley. Murphy's the name. Finley, Murphy, whatever the name. I still resent it. Right now, lover, don't get hot, don't get hot. Here we are. All through history, women have proven to be social inferiors. Oh, dry up. <laughs> women are not reliable rich. They're not built right to, uh, to do anything sensible. Oh, how stupid can you get? And during the war, women had to run streetcars and rivet airplanes and pack cabs and, and, and work and in shipyards and drive trains and join the wax and the wave. They were built right for that. Vicky! Yeah. Yes, and the men got back stuck in time to keep the country from falling apart. Oh, why don't, <laughs> why don't you put on a muzzle? Yeah! <laughs> you hope that was my wife. <laughs> that they're all the same. <laughs> Probably the police. Oh, I have a Well, Mr. Finley! Mr. Finley! What is it, Father? Well, Father? The car is stuck out in the alley. Have you been driving around the block again? No. Then how did the car get stuck in the alley? I backed it through the garage. <laughs> Let's get that taken care of and then we can come back and finish where we left off. Oh, there's a car in the back of this oh, car. Oh, how about the law? Oh, Mr. Henshaw, I really don't know how to apologize, sir. I'm so sorry for what I said. I'm sorry? Why, well, I haven't been in a Brannigan like this for 15 years. <laughs> it's positively stimulating. It is? Sir, next time I'm going to bring my wife. <laughs> She'll drive that Timmy right out of his mind. <laughs> What did I do to deserve that? I don't know. (laughs) 
Got a date with an angel, going to meet her at seven. Got a date with an angel, and I'm on my way to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, your Plymouth dealer invites you to watch the Lawrence Welk Top Tunes and New Talent Program Monday evenings on this same network. Also, be sure to watch the Chrysler Corporation program Climax every week on another network. Tom Kennedy speaking. Good night.